Thank you for watching our webinar recording from the series Making Home Learning Content Accessible in Early Learning and Childcare. The demo materials that are included in these webinars will give you some ideas for some free online resources that exist. However, when planning learning activities, you'll be including a variety of learning activities that are off screen and away from devices as well, including health and wellbeing and outdoor learning activities. Blank is an education technology platform that makes it easy to augment images, videos and virtual tours with additional pieces of information, it's different links um, and interactive pieces of media. It's really great for creating accessible visual learning experiences. And today we're going to have a look at a few different examples of that um, and I'm going to show you a demo thing link that I've created and then we're going to make the exact same one step by step. Now today's session is a completely basic introduction to thing link. So if you've never used it before, if you've never heard of it before, um, don't worry, just a wee second to mute everybody. There we go, that's better. Um, and today we're going to look at it just for the very um, basic means of augmenting an image. You can um, augment videos and you can create tours using ThingLink, but we're going to look at a very basic example of that today because it is an introduction session. And we've got to remember that we're working with the youngest learners and we don't want to overcrowd, we don't want to make um, the image too cluttered and have too many options and things on it because then it kind of becomes um, you know like a child in a sweetie shop and you don't know where to go and you're clicking on everything and the, um, the sort of purpose of the learning um, then can be lost. So you may have already came across some of these images. Um, some people use photographs and then bring them to life with links. Some people create playroom and classroom scenes, maybe using PowerPoint, and that's what I've done this afternoon as well. Um, and this one here, this is an example, this is from a P1 teacher, Amanda, who has used, I'm assuming it would be PowerPoint, um, or um, slides or something like that, maybe Canva, to create a background. Um, and once she's created her background, she's got all her wee um, icons in place, she then populates them with these little buttons, which will show you what happens when you click on them in just a wee second. So I'm just going to come out of the slides now and I'm going to go into my browser and I've got a little short video for you that explains very clearly what ThingLink is and this is made by ThingLink itself then we'll have a look at some examples. Now just before we start, ThingLink um, is not included um, in your Glow productivity tools so it's not within, you, know, you, you don't have access to it when you log into Glow, it's um, a, an additional service so like anything else, any new app, or any new software that you want to try, you must check with your local authority first um, if it is um, if there has been um, GDPR approved. Um, although the purpose that we're using ThingLink for in this example is learners aren't having their own accounts and you're not going to be populating it with children's data. It's simply going to be a place for you to bring learning materials together onto the one interface that are easily accessible for young learners. But please do check with your local authority um, first.
So that's really shown us um, the power um, within a thing link and all the um, different kind of links that you can add. But let's look at it now in the context of early learning and childcare. Let's look at how we can use thing link to bridge the gap. Um, we're not seeing our, all of our children face to face at the moment. So we're looking for a solution that allows us to still be able to engage, to share activities and ideas for learning at home and something that's an accessible format um, and doesn't involve a Glow login for our younger learners. So this example here is one of our eSchool pilots um, and this is all about the adventures of Doug. So you can see here, there's an image, a background image. Um, there's a, it's a photograph um, of a, a scene out in the countryside down by the river or down by the burn. And then there's some images being popped on top and that has been saved as one image and then it's been uploaded into ThingLink where the links have been added. So let's click on some of these links. You can see that they're pulsing. They want us to, to click on them. So let's see what happens, for example, when we click on link number one. There's a button here telling us to click. And it's taking us to see babies to number blocks. Now that little um, clue might have been there. The little image um, giving us a little um, description, a visual description of what it might be here. Let's click on this one. Hello, Hello my, my name, name is Doug. Doug. It's, it's great, great to see you. you. Let's, Let's explore. And then finally down here, we'll click on this music symbol. Let's see what's behind this one. And it's taken us to a YouTube video um, of the Three Crows song. So this one um, is populated with media from the web, but your thing link might be media that you have created yourself. So let's have a look um, at another couple before we go in. Um, so this one here, um, this is from a um, primary teacher. Um, he shared this one on Twitter. Um, and in his classroom here, he in, or in his thing link, he has a photograph of his classroom. And then at key points in his classroom, at certain areas, he has popped on the links with the relevant content in the background. So that's another way you could use it. It doesn't have to be, you know, a cartoon image. Um, it can be a photograph. It could be a you know a photo of the whole playroom. It could be a photo of a certain area. Um, come out of that one for now and that one and we've now gone into thing like okay so you can sign up for a free account you can use your glow login um, to sign up for a free account and ThingLink is also, it's a Microsoft Glow partner. So that means that there are courses on the Microsoft Educator community and we'll come back to those links at the end. There's quite a few um, different videos and different short courses that maybe after this intro session today when you start having a wee think about it, um, you might want to come back um, and revisit it. Um, another example here I'm going to show you. Um, our colleague George made this one, so this one's for a wee bit further up the school. Less busy, the links are all aligned down the bottom, so it's maybe a wee bit more visually pleasing for some learners and a wee, maybe a wee bit more organised. So that's just another way um, that you can organise it there. 
and when you click on the links it's taking you um, to various different other um, sites that you can use for learning and teaching. This one was Apple Books but I'm just going to come out of that one for now and then I will go back and I'm going to show you the um, early learning and childcare example that I've made earlier. Okay, so in the beginning, I opened up PowerPoint. So before I even went to ThingLink, I opened up PowerPoint and I'd done an image search for a room. I then chose the one with the um, wooden panelled walls here and the sofa that was included in it. This little bin was also included in it as well. And I set that image as the full size of the slide. I then went again to insert more images and I inserted an image of a speaker. The Aliens Love Underpants books, an image of a floor book, and an image here from the web of these um, counting rods, the keys and air rods. Once I had all the, oh, and I for, forgot, of course, a, an image of myself, um, and I used the app, if you might have this already for various social media, the Bitmoji app that creates an image of yourself. That obviously takes a wee bit more time. And you would maybe rather just use an image such as such as this. And thank you to my one of my older, not older, but one of my previous colleagues, um, Lorna, for allowing me to use these photos. Um, so you might this might be your background, and then you don't need to, you know, spend time in certain different images and you know cutting around them and getting them all positioned perfectly. And of course, something like this. Is relevant it's what the children are used to seeing and um, you know it's a real photograph it's a real area in the nursery and it would save you a lot of time okay so back to the thing link so what have I included on this thing link I made sure that as well as having the text um, I had some audio recording as well because not all of our um, young learners are of course reading so let me click on this first one Hello, Hello everyone, everyone. Welcome, welcome to this, this week's Learning at Home, home activities. activities. Our story of the week is Aliens Love Underpants. Explore the buttons on this thing link to discover the activities waiting for you. And then if you remember back there just to the wee intro video, it showed us that thing link is connected to immersive reader. So that's one of the Microsoft learning tools. I'm just going to click on that to show you how it works. So if you want to go back and listen to the welcome to specific words again, you can also do that through Immersive Reader. If you have um, families with English as additional language as well, you can then translate. So translate the document and then it can be read. Oh, I've chosen a language that's not available. Of course I have. Let's try this one. Okay, so then it can be translated as well for all your families that have English as an additional language. So that's a really, really powerful tool. So I had a little audio message there, a little welcome message. But what about, let's click on the book. What have we got here? Would you like to listen to the story Aliens Love Underpants? Click on the button to visit BBC Bite Size Word Waves. And then when you click on the button, it takes you to the BBC Bite Size um, site and the um, book, the, the, hyper, the URL that I copied um, was to take you to the Aliens Love Underpants Word Waves. And if you've never seen this before, um, this is a really, really great resource. So I'll click on it and just let you have a little quick um, preview of what Word Waves is. Word Waves. Aliens Love Underpants by Claire Friedman and Ben Court. Aliens Love Underpants of every shape and size. But there are no underpants in space, so here's a big surprise. 
so you can see that the line moves so as the the tone of the voice and the repetition and everything changes the line mirrors that as well so it encourages you know concentration and engagement and you know really listening um to the words so there's various different stories on there um, i just chose aliens love underpants because that was the theme of the thing link and then over here at the speaker can you imagine you're inside a spaceship travelling into outer space? Click on the button to listen to Spaceship Sound Effects. And this takes us to CBB Sound Effects. And just find it there it is there. You can listen to a Spaceship Sound Effects. So you might want to add a wee bit more text to that, a wee bit more of an instruction about, you know, for the parents and carers about how um, that could be a nice mindfulness exercise, you know, let's have a, a, a little moment, let's listen, let's use our imagination, you know, let's imagine we're travelling off um, into space. And then over here, uh, counting rods, now the symbol here is a little game, so that means, oh, there's an activity, there's something to do here. Do you remember the counting rods we have in nursery? Click on the button to play with the counting rods on your computer, phone or tablet. Can you move them into different shapes to make a spaceship? And then this has taken us um, to a site called Math Spots, which has various different manipulatives like this. So we can all um, access, of course, the you know the, the the concrete objects, the concrete materials that we have in nursery. Um, but this really can be um, the next best thing. And all the colours and everything, you know, they're all the same. Um, and they can manipulate these by moving them round. Um, you can have the grid on or not. I personally quite like the grid on because it helps um, when we're counting the amount of the rod. So that's a site called mathspot.com. And then down here at the floor book, we've got a little book symbol. And this is going to take us to a padlet. Do aliens measure underpants? Can you draw a picture and explain what happens? And then we click on the button and it's taking us to Padlet. Now we've got another session tomorrow about Padlet. So if you want to know a wee bit more about this, come back tomorrow. But what this does is this is our alternative to, for example, um, further up the school, the learners and the staff are, um, are having video calls. We're not able to do that at this stage, but as an alternative, we can use a digital tool such as Padlet. You can pose your question. And we've got all various different layouts um, for how you want the, the um, post to appear. So you can pose your question, you share a link. Um, parents and carers, families can access the link at home and then they've got various different ways that they can respond. And what's really great about Padlet is they can respond through a really simple um, drawing um, option here so you've got various different colours here you've got your pen and your eraser so they can then explain and put across their thoughts their ideas their feelings so the child's voice can come across really strongly here and um, they can mark make and they can draw and then with the support of a, a parent or carer or older family member they could then maybe um, type a description for them or pop their first name on it just by putting their name on Okay, so that one there is Padlet, so I'm just going to go back. And then finally, I just popped a, a link down at the bottom here. I, I probably could have put um, a, a symbol or something at the back here, you know, like a um, parent care notes board or something like that. This button is for the grown-ups in your family. And this then takes us to a survey form. So it's a form um, that I've created on Microsoft Forms. Um, and it's to gather um, feedback on the home learning that's offered. Okay, so just in there, that'll take them straight to a form. Um, they don't have to then go anywhere else. You don't need to send them another link. Everything is all here in the very um, one place, all within the thing link. 
So I think what we'll do now is I'm going to pause and check for questions and then we're going to um, go back to the, the thing link um, launchpad and we'll create one from scratch. Okay, so a good question there. Where do we stand with data protection in Padlets? Again, back to your local authority and double check um, with your local authority. But you maybe notice there I just said pop on the first name. Um, there's different ways that you can share a Padlet. Um, I'll just quickly jump to that and show you just now. I would always make sure that my privacy is on secret and what that means it's a bit like an unlisted youtube video so it's not public the whole world is not going to see your padlet it's on secret and it's only those with the link that can access it you then have the permissions here about what you want people to be able to do with it i wouldn't be allowing them to edit it i would only be, in, be in, um, only allow them um, to write on it um, and then you've got that wee bit more control over it I'm just going to come out with that just now but with anything else please double check with your local authority um, as all local authorities have different policies okay any suggestions to how to encourage sharing of learning alongside thing link in um, other centres what I've seen working well is um, email so for example yesterday we had a session on Microsoft Sway and that was looking at using Microsoft Sway for interactive floor books um, for an ELC and there would be key points throughout the floor book where the staff would um, pop on you know a, a comment or information encouraging families to share the learning at home and they done that um, via email so the families were then sending in their little photos or their child's comments via email that way but of course you would need to have permission forms all organized um, to make sure that those children had permission um, for their photos to be included on this way you will have a generic local authority photograph permission for him um, but it's always really good practice to make sure your parents and carers know exactly um, where photographs um, are going to be uploaded to and who can see them. Okay, I'm just having a little look. Um, is the data stored by Padlet? I'm not too sure about that. It would be again GDPR um, procedures with your own local authority to find out where the data is stored. I think the key thing though is you would be having conversation with parents and carers first about appropriate use of the Padlet. Um, so, you know, no personal details would be going on to, you know, maybe just be the mark making the children's drawings, the comments and their first name. And it would be really clear that it, it doesn't then become a forum for parents to maybe and carers to be contacting the staff or maybe to raise complaints or, you know, to be arranging a walk to the park with um, another mum or dad as well. So we'd be making that really clear that, you know, that the survey um, or the forum um, is a, a separate place for the parents to have that dialogue just just to keep yourself right but we'll focus more on padlet tomorrow okay so back to thing link here um, you can sign up to padlet with any account you don't need to have a glow account um, the free accounts um, with padlet allow i think it's 2000 views on a padlet and after 2000 views depending on what kind of content you've got on there i know that the embedded content doesn't work um, after that but i mean 2000 views is quite a lot um, so i wouldn't worry too much about that just now and there's somebody updated the privacy policy thank you so much dawn you're a star thank you but yeah do always double check with your local authority right so we've come into padlet a um, few different areas that we're going to look at. This is our um, DigiLearn Scott Padlet. So we've got the the um, example ones that come along with it. And then we've got a few of the Padlets that we've been working on as well. Um, that's the welcome tab. So if you want to inspire yourself and look for some project ideas, you can browse through a whole array um, of suggestions in there. Going to move on here to the explore tab is where we have various public padlets from all around the world in here and um, if you want to have a wee look at some more of them i'm not going to look at courses on my school at the moment 
instead we're going to go back to my media and we're going to create a brand new one okay so we've got some folders here i'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment but if you had if you were beginning to use this and you wanted to organize it then it's very easy just to create a new folder which you can then move your your thing links into so i'm just going to tap on create and i would like to choose for the purpose of this one our intro session upload image we're not going to look at video or vr image or m360 video just now we just want to you know start at the very beginning so we're going to upload an image okay so i've got some um, images in my um, folder here already that I can use so I might want to use the um, image that I used already this morning I can't there it is it's underneath or it might be like we said earlier on it might be an area photograph an area of the actual nursery I'm going to use the one that um, I used this morning so it's a wee bit more relevant Okay, so here it is now. The image has been uploaded into ThingLink and I can now begin to add. Add on my tags, add on my links and add on my voiceovers as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to do here is click on add tag. Okay, and the one I'm going to choose is add text and media because then that's going to let me um, add on the voice description. It's going to let me add on um, more of a text description that will then work in immersive reader if we wanted to translate it. And then I can add on my media, I can add on my web link content there as well. Okay, so the first thing it's asking me to do here is to change the icon. So I want all the boys and girls to know that this is an audio clip and they can listen. So I'm going to click on the audio button, click on the green button and then I'm going to give it a title. Hello everyone, welcome to our home learning activities. Okay, I'm not going to add in any links at this point. I don't want to add in an additional image that can then be further broken down with more links. I'd just like to upload some audio. Hello everyone. Welcome to our home learning activities for the week. Our story of the week is Aliens Love Underpants. Okay, so I clicked on the... Um... Hello everyone. Welcome to our home learning activities for the week. Our story of the week is Aliens Love Underpants. Okay, and all I had to do was click on the microphone off the audio recording. Now, if I didn't like that, I could simply click remove audio and I could start again. But I'm happy with that for now. So I'm going to say done. And then I'm just going to pop that right there. Okay, now moving on to our book text and media again, title, aliens love underpants, and then you could give it a description in here, um, click on the button to hear the story, and you could give it a wee bit more description there if you wanted. Uh, the button URL, so what I need to do is I would either have all my um, URLs copy and pasted onto a document or I would have them maybe open at the top. Copy the URL, pop it there into button URL and then it um, pops up with another box asking me what do I want to call the button. So it might be like the first one we looked at that says click here or you might want to give it um, uh, uh, another title of where it's taking you to. What's that one? Was BBC. Oh, the spelling's gone all funny. BBC bite size. Okay, and again, I'm going to pop in a wee bit of audio so that our pre readers um, understand what is behind the link as well. Would you like to hear the story Aliens Love Underpants? Click on the button to hear the story being read aloud. Would you like to? I'm just going to click done. I'm happy with that. Oops, now I need to edit that because I've not correctly selected that we wanted the book icon. OK, 
Okay, so we're just going to click Would on you it like again. to hear the story Aliens Love Underpants? Click on the button to hear the story being read. Okay, and then I've selected the book icon. Put there, and then I'm going to say done. Okay, so you get the idea. That is how you add the, the um, links and the media with the voiceovers as well. Okay, now one more. We'll add the Padlet one on now. Okay, so back to edit. So that was me just checking it there to make sure that I was happy with where everything was. Back to the edit button now. Add another tag. Text to media again. There are shorter options when you're adding the tags. Um, you know, if you just want to have a button that takes you straight, straight to the website, you can do that as well. But I think it's particularly important, um, especially early level, that we're given as much description as possible. You know, and more than just um, the written format as well. So we want to make it really accessible. So I think this is the last one that I'll use um, as an example. Um, now, what one did we use the last time? Was that a book? Was that a play? Let's see. I wonder what would be a good one for our floor book. Let's use the star. And then, of course, when the um, pieces of media come in, so when the little drawings do come in and the mark making, you could then screenshot them. And if you were using a sway, um, or you know you were maybe doing a slideshow floor book, um, so that you were still able to share the contributions with everybody, um, and building you know that that bigger, that richer picture up of the you know the whole group or the whole class, the whole centre's learning, um, you're able to do it that way. And then it also lets all the staff see what's going on as well. And from there you can then work out you know what are your next steps, what are your possible lines of development, what are the themes that are coming through, what are the, the children really shown interest in okay um, go and we're going to share our padlet to copy our link How do aliens count underpants? Visit our floor book and draw a picture to explain how they do it. Click on the button. Okay, what that will do now. And I'll pop that one there. Then again, we could have, you know, our, our listening example here that we used. We could have our um, our game example here that took us to another website and then we could have had our um, survey um, button there. It could also be a button that's taking you to the council website or to your um, settings web page. Um, it might be that you have, instead of having this sort of background, it might be photographs. It could be a photograph um, collage of all the staff. And then when you click on it, there's a little message from each of the staff just to keep up that, you know, the familiarity of face, the familiarity of voice. Um, because you're not seeing all your children now on a day-to-day -day basis, that might be a really nice way to use it as well. Okay, so when you're happy with it, when you've got all your links in the right place, and when you've tested them, when you make, make sure that they're all working and all taking you to the correct places, maybe share it with a colleague first as well, just to, to check that out. Um, you can then share. So there's a couple of different um, things that we need to look at here. Okay, so my organisation here, it'll probably be um, wanting me to, um, it'll be thinking my organisation's within Glow. Okay, so I don't want to do that. Um, I don't really want to make it public either because it's then, it's out there. Um, not that there's any data, there's nothing sensitive on here. Um, but, you know, I would just like to keep it to the confines of the children that are in our group, that are in our setting. So, again, we're going to make it unlisted. So, that means anyone with the link can access it, but it can't be searched for and accessed um, just out there on the World Wide Web. 
So I would keep it on private until you were happy with it anyway. So it's now on unlisted. I'm going to save that. And I've got a few different things I can do here. Okay, I can share the link. So you might have whatever your means of communication are at the moment. You might have, you know, a group call email system. You might have a blog, some sort of online notice board. It might be social media. That's somewhere there that you could share your link. You may already be using something like Sway or a blog where you can embed the media as well. So by copying the big embed code, and if I just nip over to um, the example of that, that's then what it looks like. So if you were at the session yesterday um, about Sway, you, you, you know that you can then embed content in it and a thing link is embeddable as well. So that means it's all again there in the one place and it's not taking you um, off and then you, you end up, you know, with an absolute ton of tabs open and you're all mixed up. It's all there then in the one place. Okay, then there's a few other different places that you can share it to. I probably wouldn't do it this way. I, I would, you know, copy the link first and then share it just so I had a wee bit more control and I knew exactly where it was going. Okay. Um, you can download offline as well. Um, but I think the, the, the um, main ways you would want to share it to... Um, be able to engage with you, the audience is um, sharing it through the link or the um, embedding it into a blog or to a, a sway or something like that. So I'm just going to have a wee pause now and I'm going to check our comments um, and see if we've got any questions. What have we got coming in, Dawn? There was a few, but I think I've answered them either. Donna was asking, could we print the contributions that children and parents add? I wasn't sure how to answer. Is that the proposal? Yeah, print? so they would come in through your Padlet. And this, this was actually... Um, this was me that done that yesterday. So I set it up and then I joined, pretending I was a parent or carer. So what you could then do from there um, is you could um, copy it or you could... Um, I would probably open it and then I would do a wee, a wee screen grab and I would save it that way. So I would maybe use the snipping tool if I was on a laptop or if I was on a mobile device, I would do a wee screen grab um, and I would be able to save it that way. Then I have it as a photo image and I can then put it, you know, wherever it is that we're collating um, all our um, pieces of child's voice, all our pieces of learning from home. That's how I would probably do it that way. How much content can you use in the free version? I'm not sure if there's a limit. Um, we could certainly find that out for you. I don't know if there's a limit to how many you can create, but the free version, there's definitely a limit to how many views per thing link. Um, and it's the views from the, the minute that you make it. Um, and that's capped just now at 2,000. Although the links still work, if you've got embedded content into your thing link, so you can also... You could embed the Padlet into your thing link as well. Um, it, it stops, I'm sure it stops the embedded content working. Um, and I think if you were to pay for it, I think it's about, it's around about £2 a month. So if you were to do it um, on your own, if you wanted, you know, for your own professional development, it's about £2 a month. So I hope that's um, answered some of the questions. So on that note, talking about embedding content, let's have a look. So instead of having the, the link taking us here to the Padlet. Let's have a look at what happens when we um, embed it. So I've just done that a wee bit quickly. I'm going to add the tag again. This time I'm going to add content from a website and I know that it, it's going to be embedded content. It's given me this symbol here. Okay. So let's change the icon. Let's have what else have we got? I'll just use a few of that for this one. So back up to our um, Padlet. And under my sharing options, making sure my privacy is still on secret, I'm going to embed this one. So it gives me this big long code here. I'm going to copy it back to my thing link. I'm going to paste my embed code in here. Okay, and then I'm going to say done, and we'll see what happens now when we click on it. Okay. There, it's popped it up in the box for us, in the thing link box, and it's not opened up another tab. So that might be um, maybe a better way if you've got content that can embed. Certainly not all content allows you to embed, um, but you, you can certainly embed um, off a number of sites. Um, and that, I suppose, just um, takes away from um, younger learners getting lost, clicking on you know other places and then not able to find their way back. 
Thank you. Eva, I've just looked on the, the Microsoft about the thing yes. link, and I've got the, the prices here. It says, yeah. obviously, there's a the free version, mm -hmm. um, $35 a year and $2 per additional student. So it's quite inexpensive to school or to just bring that in. Yeah. So it would be good for procurement if they decided that was for their school. Uh -huh. Yeah, and at this stage, we're not thinking about learners having ac accounts or anything. We're just thinking about them um, being able to access the learning material that you've pulled together via the thing link. Um. Okay, so really, um, that was about all we were going to cover um, in the um, setting up a thing link um, for ELC. Um, I think we've covered the different types of um, icons that we can set up. Um, we've made sure that... Um, we've got an audio description, we've made sure that it works, um, we've, we've got a text so that it works with immersive reader as well, so that if we do have any families with English as an additional language, they are able to then um, translate it as well. Um, we've double checked our sharing options and we'll just go back up there, back to our cog, just to remember where they are, because that's really important and we're going to share them unlisted, so um, it's only the people that we're giving the link to that can access them, it's nobody then out um, in the World Wide Web. Um, then let's see what else can we do, back to our thing link. Um, so is this the one that I have just made? I would like to now pop that into um, a folder just to show you how that works. So earlier on, I created a new folder that's called ELC Demo and I would like to move that one um, into that folder. ELC Demo there, pop it in um, and that'll keep it all organized so all my pieces of work are in here. If I did want to um, create a sort of generic one that maybe had, you know, the image of all the staff um, already on it and it maybe had, you know, key key links that maybe take us to um, the, the nursery website or, you know, just key, key links that are going to be on all of the thing links. What you can then do um, is you can clone your thing link as well, so it'll give you a carbon copy um, and then you can just amend your links as well, so that saves you a wee bit of time. If the links are all okay, but you don't want the background anymore, then you've got the option then you can replace your background there as well. Okay. Um, what else can we do here? If I just choose another one for um, this purpose. So I'm going to choose this one. And then I want to look at the statistics on this one. It gives me a wee bit of analytics, so it's letting me know um, how many times it's been viewed how many clicks we've had on the links and the approximate time that's been spent um, on the thing link as well. So that's really good for a wee bit um, of self-evaluation as well. If you want to see just how much um, engagement is going on with your thing links, um, you, you have that opportunity um, to check them as well. Um, if you wanted to get rid of a thing link, you know, if you have, have a few playabouts, you end up creating quite a few, you don't need them anymore, you can quite easily just delete them there as well. If you want to take things out of folders and reorganise them, it lets you do that as well. So, Okay, is there any other questions, Dawn, or is there anything you think I've maybe missed? Just to then, is it, I, I missed, missed is the, the recording, recording, is the session recorded? It either? is, it's been recorded um, and it'll be available next week. And at the end, I'm going to pop the links um, into the chat for everybody. And if you just, if you can copy and paste them, put them in a safe place. Um, and don't, don't worry if you miss them because what we will do when we um, upload the the videos that actually go on here, they go on our DigiLearn Scott blog, under webinars, webinar catch up. What I'll do as well is as well as the, the video recording um, of the webinar, I'll put a little bit of text with the links in there as well. So don't worry too much if you, if you miss anything um, today. So you've you've got a few different options, just like let's go back in here. Um, let's go back in here. Okay, so this is your sharing option. So you've got quite a clear um sharing button here at the top right. You've got a big blue button that says share. Okay. 
but first of all before you do that if you go into your um, oops, go into your settings settings first and make sure your privacy settings are checked onto unlisted so it's only the people with the link to save that and then you go to share so the two main options here probably the share link one will be the easiest one okay so that's probably going to be the easiest one for you so you can share that you know whatever way you're already sharing information with your parents and carers you can give them a note of that link um, you can also um, if you highlight um, your if you copy and paste this into just make sure it's the right one into the browser here and just test it before you give it out it's going to then take you to your thing link and if you highlight your URL so if you click on it to make it all blue if you're using a Microsoft Edge browser it then gives you the option there to create a QR code as well so if you wanted to make it even more accessible and send out the QR code, parents and carers can then scan this um, on a mobile device and that would take them to it as well. So they can either um, click on the link or they can scan it. So if maybe you're sending out paper copies of things. I'm really not sure how it works. It's all different everywhere. But if you were sending out paper copies, they, then the, the QR code would maybe be a wee bit more of an effective way to do it because then they wouldn't be able to click on a link or anything if it was on paper. So... Um, I hope that answers the question. The other um, sharing option that we had was um, to embed media. So if you have a blog um, or if you're using a Sway, you can copy and paste the big long embed code, pop it in, um, and then it will embed it into the, the body um, of your Sway there. So it's already in. Um, and if if you do have if you're using a glow blog it'll look the same um it'll stay you know within the the main frame of the blog and then it all works within that web page and you don't need to go anywhere else okay so that was about it for our um run through a very basic run through of um, creating a thing link for the purpose of early learning and childcare families if you would like a wee bit of a more in-depth tour of ThingLink, if you you know you get you get to grips with this and you think, yeah, I would maybe like to um, have a video background, or maybe you have access, you can take um, 360 videos, or if you want to create a tour, um, if that's something that interests you, please pop that on the evaluation form, and then we can plan for that in our future webinars. So I'm going to share the link with you in just a wee second. If you could hang on just for a couple of minutes to complete that for us, um, it really, um, you know, it, it makes things a wee bit easier for us because we want these webinars um, to meet your needs and we don't know what they are until you, you know, you tell us. So um, I'm going to just stop the um, recording now and I am going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to pop those links in. Um, and feel free if anybody has any questions um, now is your your chance um, to ask them and I will also copy and paste um, these links in um, to the chat as well so a few different places here where you can go a blog Digital and Scott where you can catch up on the webinar recordings and also see what webinars are coming up we can recap on what is thing link here we've got the thing link video that we showed at the beginning We've got a previous webinar recording that wasn't necessarily pitched for early learning and childcare, but it was a general one um, that took place in the summer um, through our team. So please feel free to visit that one. And there's also the added bonus. There's a wee bit in there about Google Earth as well. On the Microsoft Education um, community, there are a couple of different places where you can go to upskill and thing link as well so there's um, a link here to tell you all about um, the virtual tours and then there's also an um, I, I had a wee look at this one as well and this is a really good step-by-step -step one it's got little short bite-sized videos little demo videos that takes you through all the steps um, bit by bit and that's on the Microsoft Educator course um, and if you're like me if you're quite a visual learner and like Dawn too um, we quite like to we, we watch wee bits we'll watch little chunks we'll pause it and then we'll go and try it out then we'll go back to the next bit watch that little chunk pause it and then we'll go and try it out um, so that's how we like to learn so um, I'm just going to
Thank you for watching the webinar recording. We hope you've enjoyed it and found it helpful.